have learned four ways to prove that triangles are congruent. And in this video, we're going to learn the last way, the fifth way, called hypotenuse leg. And then, once we're finished with that, we're going to talk about, once we know triangles are congruent, what can we say about their corresponding parts? So before we do this, we need to talk about right triangles because hypotenuse leg can only be used when you have two right triangles. Now, when you have a right triangle, obviously we know it's a right triangle because one of the angles is a right angle. You, that is shown by this little box. So you need to label that on your diagram. And then the side opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse, and it is the longest leg of the triangle. The other two sides of the triangle are called legs. Like I said, the hypotenuse is always the longest side of <clears throat> a right triangle because it's opposite the largest angle, and the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. The legs always form the right angle. So where the two legs meet, that's going to be your right triangle. Or, sorry, your right angle in your right triangle. Okay, so now that we have this terminology down, the hypotenuse leg theorem says if two right triangles have congruent hypotenuse, <laughs> hypotenuses and one pair of corresponding legs, then the two triangles are congruent. So looking at our diagram here, we have two hypotenuses and that's the leg opposite the right angle. So hypotenuse BC is congruent to hypotenuse EF. Then we've also shown that we have two legs. Leg BA is congruent to leg ED. So therefore, using the hypotenuse leg theorem, I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now again, it's very important that you know that you must have a right triangle or two right triangles to use this theorem. And you must state in your proof that they are right triangles. All right, let's determine if a hypotenuse and leg have been given to you in each of the following triangles. If I'm given side AB and AC in this first triangle, well, those two are legs. They are not a hypotenuse and a leg. So this would be no. Now, looking at this next one, I've been given <clears throat> <clears throat> DE and DF, well, notice that DE is opposite the right angle, so therefore it is the hypotenuse. So yes, I've been given a hypotenuse and a leg. And on this last one, I've been given MN and MO, and I notice that MO is opposite my right angle, so yes, this is a hypotenuse and a leg as well. Now, we have learned five different ways to prove that triangles must be or can be congruent or proven congruent. The last one, you must have right triangles to use. And now we're going to talk about a thing called CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, this sounds like kind of a no brainer, but if I can prove that two triangles are congruent, then I can say all its corresponding parts are congruent. So this theorem states, if two triangles are congruent, then all of its corresponding parts, its angles and its sides are congruent. So in our two triangles, if I say these two triangles are congruent, I can say that all its corresponding sides, A, B, and A, and D, E, BC and EF and CA and FD are all congruent. I can also say that all corresponding angles are congruent. Angle A and angle D, angle B and angle E, angle C and angle F. And we'll do a couple of proofs in the next video that show you how this works. 
All right, so let's complete the following congruent statements. If I know that these two triangles are congruent because I've been given a congruent statement, then angle A has to be congruent to angle M because they're both right angles. And they're also mentioned first in my congruent statement. And I know that side CB must be congruent to side OM because they are both the hypotenuse. Oh, I forgot to put a little bar above that. Sorry. So I need to do that real quick. And in the next set of triangles, I'm telling you that they are congruent, so side XZ is congruent to side XZ in the other triangle. And angle W is congruent to angle Y because they are all corresponding parts. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and we abbreviate that as CPCTC. All right, notice that CPCTC can be used to prove many ideas between two triangles. For example, midpoint, angle bisector, segment, bisector, and parallel lines. And here's a couple of examples of that. I have two triangles here in my first diagram. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. So therefore, I know that all the corresponding parts are congruent. What needs to be congruent in this triangle to prove that side AB is parallel to side ED? Well, to prove that triangles are or two lines are parallel, I have to show that one of the sets of angles, alternate exterior, alternate interior, corresponding angles are congruent or that same side interior are supplementary. So looking at this diagram, I know that angle B has to be congruent to angle E because they're corresponding angles. And so I can say angle B is congruent to angle C because of CPCTC. And as soon as I say that those two angles are congruent, I can say that Line AB is parallel to line ED because of alternate interior angles converse. Remember the converse says if the angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. All right, now on this last one, I'm telling you that triangle XYZ is, or is congruent to triangle XWZ. So what needs to be congruent in these to prove that angle XYX, sorry, YXW is bisected by line segment XZ? Okay, well, if I can prove that these two angles, YXZ and WXZ, are congruent, I can say that XZ is a bisector because that's what bisect means, cuts into two congruent pieces. So if I say that angle YXZ is congruent to angle WXZ because of CPCTC, then I can say that angle YXW is bisected by segment XZ, and that is the definition of an angle bisector. So this might be a way that you could use CPCTC. Okay, so I think that you have enough information to where you can go to the next video.